Greetings, Daniel Persado for Adobe Photoshop CS6 Extended, and today we're talking about IBL lights, image-based lights, and their sizes, and when to use them for reflections or just pure lighting, and how to maximize your RAM usage and whatnot. So let's take a quick look here. I have two spheres. They're both with the same parameters on them. They look the same here as they should. One's a low res, and it uses a small texture here. It's 256 by 128 and the second uses a larger texture, 4096 by 2048, and they're producing the same shine color, if you will, on the object. And this is because that's how it gets squished for harmonics calculation, and Nikolai Savakin will have to come and be a guest when he explain what all this means. But basically the texture gets squished to about 128 by 64, and that's what you see projected here as a color on here. And for shine, it's great. If I ramp down the shine here, you'll see that it disappears, but you can still see some of the color being displaced on this object, being being shined on, if you will. If I ramp it back up, you'll see basically what looks like a reflection. It's not really the reflection. It is, but it's not. If you really want a true reflection, then ramp up the reflection to 100%. And I don't want to get too complicated here, but you'll see a difference very quickly. If I, let's ramp this back down to zero, and I'm going to render this first low res, and you can see here that it's pretty dull, pretty simple, and that's what you would expect from a very low res texture. Now, if I turn it off, go to the high res, and again, we're still using the shine. There's no reflection calculated on this right here. It's going to give you approximately the same looking image. You can see it's very rough, nothing to write home about it right there. So let's go ahead and ramp this up to 100% and re-render it. And you can already tell that at least you're getting some detail drawn out of here. And it looks pretty nice. Now let's go back to the low res. And I know this is going very fast, but that's what this is a video for. You can stop it, pause it, and replay it. I'm going to ramp this up. And you can already tell it still looks dull. You have a low res image, it's going to look dull. But that's okay in this case because we're using it as an example. High res, low res. So the lesson here, to summarize, if you're just using a background for lighting or for just showing a little bit of the shine, then use a low res image. You don't have to really go higher than 128 by 64. If you want to go 256, it's still going to get squished down to 128. It'll maximize your memory for other operations in Photoshop. But if you want that reflection to look good and you need it to look good in your object, you're going to want to go and use a high res. And for OpenGL, I think the max is about 2048 if you're just looking at it through OpenGL, which OpenGL is when you're, let's activate this canvas. OpenGL is the active view in Photoshop when you're moving around and rotating the object. Ray trace can go 4096. It could even go higher. It will use as much RAM as it can. So Keep that in mind. If you really need that high detail, then go ahead and do it. If you really don't, 1024 might be good enough. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave comments. I know this was a bit complex and uh, I was talking kind of fast, but go ahead, leave some questions, and I hope this helps you out in your usage for IBL lights. And as always, thanks.